Durham Living is presented by Ontario Power Generation, a proud partner in Durham Region. Coming up on Durham Living. Coming to the rescue. Lifelong learning. And the cream of the crop. Hi, I'm Carolyn Ellis. And I'm Jerry Archer. We're your hosts of Durham Living. We're back for another exciting look at the people and places that make Durham Region a great place to live. Pets also make Durham a great place to live. And we're coming to you today from the Humane Society of Durham Region. Now, this little guy right here is named Buster, one of the animals up for adoption at the Humane Society. Hopefully, he won't be here for too long. Humane Society is known for coming to the rescue of helpless animals. Trained staff help bring the sick and abandoned back to good health. Well, my typical day would be, first of all, walk the dogs, get them set up, fed, then onward to the cats, the cat kennels, same routine, feed, water, medicaid if they need to be, a lot of cleaning, um, a lot of small animals to look after. Where do the animals here come from? Um, sometimes they're abandoned, sometimes they're abused. Um, oftentimes, more often than others, they come from homes where they can no longer be cared for, for various reasons. Where would the society be without the public's help? Oh, we wouldn't be. We wouldn't exist. We are totally dependent on the um, public's donations. Very And uh, she's skinny. It's tomorrow. Oh, I like your claws. What services, aside from rescue, do you offer? Uh, besides that, we do criminal investigations for animal abuse. That's what the Ontario SPCA is all about, and that is the umbrella from which we work under. Uh, we, everything that comes in here is spayed or neutered before it goes out, as long as it's over six months of age. If it's under six months, it goes with a spay-neuter certificate for that purpose. Um, if anything develops an upper respiratory or cold-type situation, we medicate here. If it goes beyond what we can handle here, it goes up to a veterinarian to deal with that. Uh, anything that happens to come in that's, that's injured that needs medical treatment, it goes up to the veterinarian. The Society is a registered charity. The organization doesn't receive government funding and turns to the public for support. Animal lovers can help out by making a direct donation or by participating in special fundraising events. <laughs> we have two other areas besides our facility here. We have Petcetra in Ajax who take in uh, primarily cats but a couple of dogs at a time and the exact same situation in the Newmarket area and we transport animals there once or twice per week for that purpose. I have a passion for animals, obviously. I have a lot of home. I'm branching out into the shelter here with my little critters. I absolutely love them. They don't have a voice, so I, I wanted to help them in that respect, too. And I feel very strongly about animal abuse. That's, that's really my thing. For more information on the Humane Society of Durham Region, visit www.humanedurham.com. You know, they have something here called a pet sponsorship program. Oh, what's that? Well, it gives businesses and residents a chance to support the animals financially before they're adopted out to a good home. Hey, that's a great idea, but did you know that the inspectors and agents are actually appointed by the Solicitor General of the province? Hmm, this is quite an education that we're getting well, here, isn't hey, it? Hey, good segue. <laughs> uh, speaking of education, you know, lifelong learning is sort of a popular catchphrase, and Teresa Madaleno has the story on the Pickering nuclear plant where that, in fact, is the case. A view of the Pickering nuclear plant from the sky. The facility produces about 10% of the province's power. How do they do it? They say with highly skilled staff, educated through rigorous post-secondary programs and at the Pickering Learning Center. Um, I'm going to hand it over now to uh, Eric. Thanks, Corey. In this classroom at the Pickering Learning Center, both uh, longtime employees go and newcomers are focused on three large screens connected to a state-of-the-art computer system. It allows them to recreate engineering operations and maintenance scenarios. Hours are spent studying diagrams, graphs, and maps with the help of instructors. The flow sheets themselves basically are a much more detailed version of this. 
So uh, again, you can refer to that and again if you have any... Classroom work is complemented by individual computer-based training. It's something that every employee has to go through. It's a matter of studying at your own desk. Nuclear safety, engineering, the environment, policies, procedures, and leadership are just a sample of the subject areas. 35% of education here is through computer-based training. Each employee spends about 8% of their time per year in training. Commonly referred to as CBT, this learning system has been developed and designed by OPG employees. And really the key comes down to the people. It's, uh, it's being able to have individuals that have three core skills. Uh, firstly, they need to be excellent trainers. They need to understand how adults learn. Secondly, they need to be artists. They got to think visually and graphically because there is no instructor at the front of the room. And thirdly, they must be very good computer programmers and understand how to put the code together to drive the engine behind e-learning. Yeah, we have a group going through the simulator today and hopefully they will be able to finish their exams during the day today. Imad Al Sayed is vice president of nuclear training. He says there is no shortage of enthusiasm at the world-class facility. It is a very exciting environment because, uh, first of all, it is very interesting to see people who are eager to work in this industry. Uh, as you mentioned, they have the capabilities and the skills uh, to work here. But we also see the career of the people who join us to be one where learning continues. The excitement here is fueled by a strong relationship with Durham College and the University of Ontario Institute of Technology. George Bresnoy is Dean of Energy, Engineering and Nuclear Science at UIOT. President uh, Gary Polonsky, as soon as he came to Durham College in the late 80s, I remember he came to talk to us at what was then Ontario Hydro Training, where I was also working. And we could both see the advantages of uh, high school graduates and others out in industry coming to a college first to get their education instead of joining Ontario Hydro and uh, learning their trade entirely on the job. So the system is, it's a combination of the two, it's the best of both worlds as I see it. Students come to Durham College, but they do get work placements in between the academic terms at the power plants. So tell me about this room. Okay, what we uh, what I have here is the electrical shop. Mm -hmm. uh, in this shop here, the control techs will learn about uh, 600 volt breakers, so they'll learn about electric valves. So right now we are standing amongst what? Well, right now we're actually in the instrumentation shop. Uh, in this shop here, they control maintenance. Uh, they learn how to repair valves. They learn about uh, different pneumatic instruments and control systems that you would find inside the station. And I understand that there's a lot of opportunity in this area. Oh, there is. Uh, we're in the midst right now of hiring control technicians. Uh, we hire them and then we train them here to work on devices that you see in the plant here. George Bresnoy agrees there is opportunity out there. Uh, they really want to be sure that they'll get an interesting and well-paying and secure job. And that is really what the nuclear industry has been able to offer and will continue to offer. New technologies are always emerging, but OPG staff say they are more than prepared for the challenge thanks to the advanced facility here. New trainees see the Learning Centre as not only an investment in their own futures, but an investment in power for the province. In Pickering, Teresa Madalino, Durham Living. Yes, so come here. You want to know what's happening after the break? Well, coming up. He contributed as a player and a coach to the baseball and hockey scene here in the Motor City in a way that few others could. Durham Living is presented by Ontario Power Generation. Ontario Power Generation, a proud partner in Durham Region. Ontario's energy capital, putting our energy to good use. Well, this is Sandy, one of the beautiful animals here at the Humane Society, up for adoption, Carolyn. Actually, Sandy has been put on hold, which means that Sandy's going to be going to a new and loving home very soon. He's a beautiful animal. Oh. Well, from man's best friend to a man who made history, it's been nearly 30 years since Jack Army Armstrong passed away. He contributed as a player and a coach to the baseball and hockey scene here in the Motor City in a way that few others could. His death really changed the face of sports in Oshawa. He was recently enshrined into the Oshawa Sports Hall of Fame. Donald Beattie has this report on this legend. 
Jack Army Armstrong, a Toronto-born and raised sports phenom, was lured to Oshawa in 1952 to play hockey for the Generals. He was dispatched to St. Catharines to play after the old Oshawa rink burned down. He won a Memorial Cup with the Teepees and returned to Durham in 1955, where he promptly won an Allen Cup with the famous Whippy Dunlops. Teammate Tom O'Connor remembers his grit. Jack was a great hockey player. He was one of the get dirty, put his nose right to the ground, as you might call it. And uh, he never gave up. He was festy and he was a great guy to play with. And off the ice, he was quiet, nicely mannered, really nice, really nice guy. On the ball diamond, Armstrong was just as determined. Hall of Fame inductee Bob Booth won an Ontario championship with Jack with the Oshawa Tonys and they later coached together. When he came to the park uh, for a practice or a game or, or whatever, he was always consistent. He was one of the first there to, to show up for a practice, worked hard, and, uh, and it, was, it was the same in a ball game. He brought his A game all the time and he was the kind of guy that if you uh, if you wanted to change the rules a little bit and start uh, the spikes flying or the ball thrown at your head, Jack was right there and uh, he'd make you very sorry that uh, you changed the rules and started to get a little snide. Jack's love of sports was second only to the love of his family. Wife Jean has been waiting for this induction day since his death in 1976. What he used to always say to me is, I, I'm so happy helping kids and I know they're not running around at nights and doing things they're not supposed to be doing. Oh, he said that, at least that I know. And, and I, those kids, I keep coming up. I see them still. I'm married now with their own kids. It's brought a lot to it. Because he loved um, Colton, he loved, he liked to take kids off the street. And he liked to um, help everybody and um, he, he just loved sports. Jack's sporting interest took him to the racetrack where he was co-owner of a standard bred horse, Tammy Dew. While it's said horse racing is the sport of kings, friend George Braben calls Jack Armstrong a king among men. He was a king of the guy. He, he, was, he, was, um, he was a quiet guy, but uh, he had a good sense of humor and, and, and we had a lot of laughs. But uh, on the field, whether it was hockey or, or base, softball or, or horse racing, uh, he was a different guy. He, he, he had that special desire to win, and it sort of rubbed off on uh, people he played with. Jack Armstrong was hired to manage the Oshawa Tony's fastball team in 1976. He never got the chance. Armstrong died from a heart attack shortly before the season was to begin. Boy, the fur is really starting to fly now, isn't it, huh? Maybe we should pause for this story. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I feel like movie star Claude Van Damme. Get it? Huh? Do you get it? You get it? Okay. Uh, our next story is about a woman who put a lot of work into her art. Let's hear about French harpist Isabel Perrin. Isabel Perrin is considered the Wayne Gretzky of the harp. And these grades 7 and 8 students at Sunset Heights Public School are seeing greatness up close. Sunset Heights has a program where we play classical music each morning for five minutes. And we've been doing this, this is our third year doing the program. So each year when we've had an opportunity to invite special guests to our school, we, we jump at that opportunity. Perrin started playing the harp when she was 10 years old and gave her first recital at 17. She studied music at the Academy of Nice and Juilliard. She says her love for the harp runs in the family. My grandmother used to play the harp a uh, very long time ago, much, much longer before I was born. But uh, the harp she owned uh, was still in my family and my mother had it. So my mother is a very great music lover. She doesn't play music, but she loves music. So when I was a, a young kid, she suggested me that I should try to play music. And I tried on with the piano, but it was not my instrument. I was just not comfortable with it. And then after a while, she said, well, we have that harp. Why don't you try the harp? And I did. The harp is one of the oldest instruments in the world. It dates back to the pre-Christian era. The harp is also one of the rarest, so repertoire is limited. We don't have many, many very famous composers who wrote for the harp. And uh, at least we don't have famous one before uh, the middle 19th century, except for the Mozart uh, concerto and for the Handel concerto. 
but um, then uh, on the second half of the 19th century and 20th century as harp technically developed then uh, the repertoire developed and, and many very famous composer then uh, got interested in the instrument and start writing for it. Isabel has toured all over the world, playing in Asia, Africa and Europe. But this is her first visit to Canada. Part of that visit had her performing in front of an audience at the Oshawa Durham Symphony Orchestra. It's, it's a beautiful singing instrument. It's not only an accompaniment instrument. We do this also, like piano do, but uh, we are also a singing instrument and that most of people don't know about. And even though her stopover was short, she hopes to return to Canada and especially Durham region very soon. In Oshawa, Heather Good for Durham Living. You dirty rat, see? You're not going to keep me caged. You dirty rat. No, not you, you dirty rat. No, that. Never mind. When we come back from the break, I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. I'm screaming. Get me out of here, you dirty rat. Hey. Durham Living is presented by Ontario Power Generation. Ontario Power Generation, a proud partner in Durham Region, Ontario's energy capital. Putting our energy to good use. Welcome back to this edition of Durham Living. I'm Jerry Archer along with Carolyn Ellis. We're here at the Humane Society. And Carolyn, none of this could happen without these wonderful people here volunteering. You got it. This group of people is very hardworking. What is it exactly that you have to do here? Well, basically we clean cages and uh, litter pans and walk dogs and everything and just look after the animals. Basically right. you're here to give them love, right? Yep. Well, do you like ice cream? Definitely. <laughs> right, who doesn't love ice cream? Ice cream, we all scream for ice cream. Greg Rist has the uh, scoop in this story. It used to be if you wanted a Licks ice cream cone, the only place you could find it was in downtown Toronto. However, they're in Durham now, and I start my quest for ice cream in Whitby. What is it about Licks that everybody likes? I think it's the fact that everything inside of the store is so bright Everything is friendly, inviting, it's loud, it's not quiet. We actually make up our own songs. We take the lyrics from 50s and 60s songs and put our own words to it. So Mike, tell me about the flavors. Well, we have four special ones for the kids. There's Mini-Me's, Cookies and Cream, Cookie Dolman, and then of course the favorite cotton candy for the kids. We've got a Frosty Cappuccino, there's Rocky Mountain High, and then we've got two sorbets, raspberry and mango tango. Then we've also got our own special ice creams, Moose Tracks, Bear Claw, um, it's one in there, Arctic Cherry, Mother Load, Pralines and Cream, uh, Caramel Caribou, Gold Nuggets, and then the last one is Chocolate Rodeo. And what's your favorite flavor? Mine's the Caramel Caribou. It's toffee ice cream uh, rippled with thick golden caramel cups inside. You think I should have one of those? Absolutely. Alright. Large? Large. What flavor did you get? Red chocolate chip. Alright. Andy, you just ate a whole burger, now you're going to eat that? Next stop, Lickety Splits in Curtis at Highway 2 to Town Line. Natalie, I have to say you've done wonders with this place. Whatever gave you the inspiration to go to the 1950s style? Actually, um, we were just outside one day and because uh, we lived just across the street and uh, my husband said if I had money or if I had the time, I'd open up an ice cream parlor. Now here I am in an ice cream parlor, but you've given me pea soup. How come? Um, when we first opened the uh, parlor, it was just ice cream only, and um, it was like stools, like a 50 signer with the jukebox and poodle skirts and stuff like that. But uh, about four or five months after, um, once the fall came, we decided to open up the kitchen. What, what's your down easterner connection there? Uh, Mom's a Newfie, um, and uh, we started uh, Newfie Day uh, 2001. 
and it's really picked up. Today is actually Newfie Day, that's why you're having pea soup. Um, we've also got fish and brews, uh, homemade fish cakes, uh, jigs dinner, bread pudding. The real test? Yes. Cod tongue and scrunchions? Yes. Cod? The only place in Durham I know you can get cod tongue and scrunchions. <laughs> I hear you got real scrunchions here. Real goofy scrunchions there. Real goofy scrunchions. <laughs> real goofy stuff there. Ain't by a noofy. But let's not forget why I'm here in the first place. The ice cream. So what kind of flavors can I expect to get here? Okay, well, first of all, of course, we have strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla, the basic flavors. And then you move on to the more uh, extravagant ones, I guess you can say, which is like chocolate chip cookie dough, uh, death by chocolate, which has Did you chocolate. say death by chocolate? Yes, I did. Oh. And, and that one is, has a uh, chocolate ice cream with chocolate fudge and chocolate chips, which is not for the light at heart. So, yeah, watch it. Banana split, one of my favorite. How do you make them here? Okay, well with banana splits, we, uh, we take about a golf size uh, ball of uh, ice cream. You can get three different flavors, any flavor you want. Uh, the most popular one is chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry with uh, chocolate toppings. Can we get death by chocolate, death by chocolate, death by chocolate? Uh, of course. Ooh, thank you, Carla. You're welcome. Oh, double bonus points here. Look at this. I've got my banana split. Death by chocolate, death by chocolate with death by chocolate. But then I score here. I get my scrunchions. Mmm. If you want to know what a scrunchion is, find a friend from out east and ask them. I'm not going to tell you. For Durham Living, Greg Rest. Which one first? Ice cream. Scrunchie. Well, that's it for this edition of Durham Living. I'm Jerry Archer. And I'm Carolyn Ellis. And we'd like to thank the great staff and the volunteers that's here right. at the Humane Society of Durham. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. You can see we've got all the animals out here. The dogs, the cats, the rats, and uh, what else do we have? A hamster? There's also guinea pigs, bunnies, all kinds of animals available here for adoption. Right. Well, if you have any ideas or any comments about this story or any others, just uh, drop us a line or you can always email us. That's it for this edition. Bye-bye. Durham Living is presented by Ontario Power Generation, a proud partner in Durham Region.